So it's good to see you. We're in our second part of our study about the fight in gospel ministry. And um, <coughs> that was just the introduction. And now we're getting into the meat of the message and of the study. So let us come before the Lord. Dear Lord, we just thank you for all your goodness and love. And we give you the praise and the glory. And Father, I just pray for your anointing and blessing. And I just pray that you would encourage us today in your name and for your glory. Amen. I was preaching uh, some while back and a Muslim lady uh, did not like me preaching the gospel in Manchester. And she threatened to stop me from doing it. And often you will find if you engage in evangelism or the sharing of the gospel, you will get opposition. You will get opposition. And so God has warned us and, and prepared us for this. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Ephesians 6.10 So we've got to be strong in the Lord and it's got to be in his strength. You know, so often we can do things in our own strength, in fleshly power, in fleshly ability. God doesn't want us to stand in our flesh. He wants us to stand in the power of the Holy Spirit. But we've got to be strong in the Lord. Some wonderful Bible texts we're going to look at now. You turn to Romans chapter 1.16. It says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. The Apostle Paul wasn't ashamed. You know, we, we shouldn't apologize as preachers for the gospel. The gospel is the truth that will save people and change people's lives. So never be ashamed as a pastor to preach the gospel. Never be ashamed, any of us, to preach the gospel. We should be bold and clear and decisive about preaching the gospel. And if you're a pastor and you've been preaching in a church, and it's been a liberal church, for some reason you've been in a denomination, you got called to a church or you got sent to a church that was liberal, and they've kind of silenced you, they've kind of said to you, well, you're over the top, It's a bit. you're a bit over the top, you shouldn't be preaching hell and damnation and the Bible's completely inspired. Uh, just keep it quiet now and, and, and don't be preaching like that. You've got to turn around and start preaching bold, clear, proclamative gospel messages and do it and not fear that congregation. Okay? You've got to start doing that. You've got to start being loyal to Jesus rather than loyal to your church. Your loyalty is to Jesus and if your church is liberal and it's stopping you from preaching the gospel, you've got to start preaching the gospel. And if they throw you out, then... They did that to the prophets, so what? If they throw you out, you lose your manse, you lose your, 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 your salary, you're kicked out of the denomination, so what? Who cares? Your loyalty is to Jesus and to the truth and to the saving of souls. If they kick you out, go and start a church in your own home or, or, or God will, will show you where to go or, and God will open doors for you. It might not be easy, it might be tough, but don't settle down. Don't please the congregation don't don't keep keep the truth quiet don't put the truth under the carpet and say you know I can't preach the gospel it's too offensive no you were called to the ministry for that one reason to preach the gospel so preach it okay it says I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. I know I've been in these denominations and I know that they can soon silence you and you've got to stop it. You've got to stop listening to you. It doesn't matter what your denomination thinks. And, and it's a very powerful culture that can come on you and suppress you. And what it is, it's the fear of man. And it's listening to man. And you've got to break that power that's pushing you down. The way you break it is you stop fearing men, you stop fearing your bishops, and you start fearing God, and you obey the word of God, and you begin to preach Jesus boldly. 
no matter what happens. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 it says for God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of sound mind. God will fill you. God will enable you to preach that word when you get up in the pulpit. He will give you that power. He will ignite you mightily. You've got to come to him and say, as a preacher, as a pastor, and as a servant of God, God, I can't do it. I can't do it. I just can't do it. I can't preach with anointing. I can't preach with power. I can't do it. Please help me. When you get on your knees and say that, you, you, God will come and he will anoint his messages that he's given you. And, and so don't fear what men say. Okay? Preach with boldness. 2, Timothy, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 10 verse 12. 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 10. Verse 12. It says, Be of good courage, and let us be strong for our people and for our for the cities of our God and may the Lord do what is good in his heart uh, 2 Samuel chapter 10 verse 12 Job says be of good courage and let us be strong for our people and for the cities of our God and may the Lord do what is good in his sight be of good courage and let us be strong be of good courage be of good courage God will encourage you he will encourage you. You know, if you get discouraged and you're feeling down as a pastor and as a preacher, you know what you got to do? You've got to spend time with God. Come alongside God. Take a day out of your ministry and study the Word. Study good preachers. Study good Christian books. Get out the old Puritans. Get out the old early church fathers and study them and read them and read the Scriptures. Listen to good preachers um, and 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 get filled up again and get renewed but be strong and courageous my friend Psalm 27 verse 1 I'm just looking for time because I, I want to do it in sections Psalm 27 verse 1 <clears throat> Psalm 27 verse 1 the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? God's with you. God's with you. If God has called you, He is with you. You have got the might and the power of Almighty God who created this world. He is with you. And as Luther would say, one with God is a majority. God, if God is with you, do not fear. If God has called you, do not fear. All the resources, all your needs, God will supply. Do not fear. God is with you. Okay? Haggai chapter 2 verse 4. Haggai chapter 2 verse 4. Haggai chapter 2 verse 4 says you, you now be strong Zerubbabel says the Lord and be strong Joshua son of Jehozadak the high priest and be strong all you people of the land says the Lord and work for I am with you says the Lord of hosts oh, God's saying he's with you now work for him and serve him isn't that amazing isn't that amazing they were building the walls of uh, uh, and the temple and they were discouraged and they were downhearted God says work let's read that again you now be strong Jerubbabel says the Lord and be strong Joshua son of Jehozadak the high priest and be strong all you people of the land says the Lord and work for I am with you says the Lord of hosts he's with you he's with you he's with you he's not going to leave you and not only that, it, it, it's a command, a positive command. Come on, move it, says God. Move it. 
move it just as a you got soldiers in the trench and they blow the whistle in the first world war and they get out of the trench and some of their soldiers are in the trench and they're scared to get out of the trench and the the captain blows the whistle and says come on move it move it and god is saying come on move it we got we're in a battle we're in a war <laughs> you gotta build oh you gotta build folks you gotta build your local church why are you building your own house why are you spending time looking after your car in your house and making your lovely life in your nice middle class lifestyle why are you doing that why aren't you obeying the command here yet now be strong Zerubbabel says the Lord and be strong Joshua the Zodiac the high priest and be strong all you people of the land says the Lord and work for I am with you says the Lord of hosts why you know what gets really on my nerves there's so, something that annoys me most more than anything else in all the world one of the things that annoys me more than anything else in all the world you know what really really annoys me is when you go in a church and the house of God is neglected where the windows are falling down and the roof needs repairing and the decoration in the building is poor and it's all neglected in the house of God and then you go to these people's houses and it's all nice and perfect and beautiful yet their church has been neglected that stinks that stinks folks that stinks if you're in the house of God then you make it the best that it can be you paint it up you make it look clean and, and cared and, te and, and looked after because what you're doing is you're showing respect to God you're saying to people our God is worthy of the best and we're doing the best for him okay so if you start taking more care of God's kingdom rather than your own middle class lifestyle then God might bless your church and he might even bless your life the reason why your sons and daughters have gone away from the Lord is because you have been too middle class with your too middle class lifestyle look too smug in your own little smug lifestyle and you've not cared about the kingdom of God and so God has left your children he said well, okay if that's the way you treat me go, go on you go and live your middle class lifestyle look at what your kids are doing look at where they're going now you're not so smug now are you God wants you to get down on your knees humble yourself said Lord I've been smug I've been living a nice middle class lifestyle I've been nice but I've neglected the house of God I've neglected you God and he wants you to come and he wants you to kneel before him and say Lord forgive me and he wants you to obey this command ye now be strong Zerubbabel says the Lord and be strong Joshua son of Zizodai the high priest and be strong all you people of the land says the Lord and work for I am with you says the Lord of hosts he wants you to get into your church and he wants you to do the work that he has called you to do I don't know what that work is it might be you were the musician it might be you were the accountant of the church it might be you were a deacon or an elder of the church it might be you were in Sunday school it might be you were called to be a missionary but whatever it is you were you were called but you chose a nice smug middle-class lifestyle and you disobeyed the call of God in your local church God wants you to turn that around now and say no I'm going to obey the call of God I don't like this smugness anymore and God's not blessing me he's blessed me materially but he's not blessed me spiritually and I want my kids to know God I want them to be prospering in God and they're not going to prosper in God unless I prosper in God and I need to get down on my knees I need to repent I need to come to Jesus and say Lord forgive me cleanse me wash me renew me fill me equip me Lord what is it you want me to do what was the call that you had for me what is the call for me I'm gonna go in my church and I'm gonna serve you it's not an easy road folks it's not an easy road it's a sacrificial road but God will bless you spiritually